Hello, my name is Trace Maxfield. Welcome to Hammerdown Woodworking. Today we are going to make a quick and dirty 10 and inch jig. So let's jump right into that. The tools that I used, a speed square, a combination square, pencil and a sharp type knife, marking knife or an exacto knife, a drill with a Phillips head, a couple of squeeze clamps, speed clamps, and a router. Now I've got the jig laid out and I've numbered the parts so you'll know what I'm talking about when I reference it. But the guides are one and two, pieces one and two. And number three is going to be the uh, fence. Number four is going to be your stop. And number five is just a cross brace that holds all that together. And of course I've got the work piece in, in the middle of it to size it all up. Make sure that your boards are straight, your guides are straight. Okay, for the first thing we're going to do is just fasten one side of the guide down to an outside rail. This does this piece does not have to be square. On the other end, the fence, this does have to be square. So square that up with one side, either the first board or the second board, doesn't matter. As long as your workpiece is square, it'll all come together square. Leave enough room on each side of the guide and that cross brace to be able to fasten it down to a flat surface such as your workbench. Then you're going to pull the workpiece in, pull your stop in, and then pull the other rail in. Don't squeeze these together where the boards won't slide, but you do want them up to where a, a, a snug enough fit to where your boards, your workpiece will slide in and out, move back and forth, and then just fasten those down. I use drywall screws on mine. Then set the depth of your your router bit to whatever depth you choose for the size workpiece and the size tenon that you want. Then slide your stop and your workpiece up so that your base of your router is against the fence but the blade, the bit is not touching your workpiece. You do not want it touching your workpiece. And then holding the router against the, the fence, just turn it on and make a pass across both rails. Then you'll need to take a little sandpaper or something, clean those fuzzies up because you will need to be able to see the defining line that the bit makes in those because that's what you're going to line up against. Now measure the depth that you, or the, for the length that you want your tenon. I'm marking an inch and a half on this, but this is just an example. And then take a sharp knife. I used an X-Acto knife. If you got a marking knife or any type of blade, you want to define that line with a, a good sharp knife. That way you won't get fuzzies on it. And do this all the way around your workpiece. Then just slide your workpiece back in. Bring that line up to where the left hand side of your, what you'd say a dado that you've cut in those guides. Line that up with that dado mark, that, the left hand side of that dado mark. And then bring your stop up and fasten that down with a screw right through the middle of it. Now take your router with the depth set that you need and just pass it through, keeping it against the fence and going through that, that track, that channel. Pull it out a little bit and repeat. Pull out a little more and finish it up. Clean that sawdust out of that so it will go all the way back up in there. If you've got an air compressor or something where you can take, just take a line, blow it out, or a vacuum and suck it out, either one would work fine. Slide your piece all the way back up in. Make sure you've marked this side so it cuts it with a good sharp crisp shoulder and just do the same thing again on this side pulling it out a little bit each time make a pass to you to you finish it up and that 
will be both sides of your tenon made. This is just a simple jig, simple to make, easy to use. And you can use any size straight bit in your router that you want. Quarter inch, three eighths, half inch, three quarter inch. Of course, the smaller that bit is, the more passes you're going to have to make. And you're going to want to make shallow passes at first anyway and keep getting deeper with your bit while you're set up. Uh, but if you're working with three quarter inch stock and you want a quarter inch, uh, Tenon, you can put your bit down and take a quarter inch at it one time, flip that board over, take a quarter inch off the other side. Should be all right and not have to adjust the, the depth or height of your bit after you get it initially set up. Uh, also, some tips for making this jig work right. First, make sure that you use a knife to establish your shoulder lines on your tenon, on your workpiece. If you don't, that bit will make all kinds of fuzzies on your workpiece and you'll be sanding those off. And if you sand too much, you get your line out of, out of the line. Uh, make sure that your fence, this section here, is square to one piece. If your workpiece is square, and when you put that in here, this, the other side, whichever side you use, will be, will be square. But just make sure that this, the fence that your router is going to ride along, is square. And once you put your, you don't even have to measure anything. We you put your router base against this, wherever, of course mine fell right here, but wherever that bit cuts across those two, that's where you're gauging to. Uh, there's no measuring as far as that goes. Set your stop. This piece right here, I've got it numbered number four. Set it where you're going to stop cutting at for your shoulder. That way you get consistency out of, out of every cut. Uh, also make sure that your two rails that your router is referencing off of is the same thickness as your, as your stock, your piece that you're working on, your workpiece. Other than that, it's pretty well straightforward. And you can make the same jig but up on its sides. Just make sure the width is the same width as your workpiece to establish your shoulders of the sides of the tin and that's pretty well it if you like this content we encourage you to give us a thumbs up and also subscribe any comments leave them in the comment section below and as always thanks for watching